Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Carl Lightning and today we're talking about virtual reality, specifically the Vision Pro. And Apple have just released their first film, Submerged, which is a short masterpiece about a World War II submarine. And I want to give my comments on it because actually, as someone who creates virtual reality experiences in the corporate world, it's interesting to see where VR is now catching up in the entertainment world, you know, with more coming into Vision Pro and 3D films becoming more accessible with the likes of Meta and Sony and now Apple Vision Pro. Whether Apple's vision, ha, no pun intended there, but is it actually going to be the future as everyone going to be walking around with headsets on like Apple plans? It's an interesting take and I just wanted to talk about that today because I actually think it's a very interesting topic for 2024. This, I believe, is three years too early for Apple, but let's dive let's in. As much as I've written the script today, that last line was certainly not in it. But you know what? I'll take any submarine ocean jokes, what we can get into it. Obviously, Submerged is one of a kind. It's, it's something I've not experienced before. This film was actually directed by an Oscar award winning director, Edward Berger, renowned for many films. But this was his first mark in virtual reality. And it's, it's good to see he's exploring uh, World War II submarines. And most of the films were shot in places like Prague, Brussels and Malta, although it mainly being obviously a submarine, this was a specific set built uh, of a World War II submarine submerged in a dive tank uh, to really get that immersion. In terms of the camera, it seems to be a specific camera designed for Apple Vision Pro, which is pretty decent, judging by what my friends are saying in the industry and the documentary where they show off some of the tech and how it was actually filmed. It's an 8K film, and even though that sounds quite a lot for our average tellies that sit at about 4K, uh, you really do get that extra definition in this film. So the director did a fantastic job the set pieces really make this film and the quality of the camera really do tie it up to be an absolute brilliant first edition for the Apple Vision Pro and you can see the clarity on the glasses and the camera and they come together. So my initial thoughts are as a first production that one you don't really have to pay for if you've got the subscription of Apple Plus and I'm sure you've got it if you've got a Vision Pro. So the quality of what you should expect was absolutely there. It's been set written and built all you know brilliantly you can really tell that there is tons of people involved in this production from the sound design to the editing to where they place the camera and there was a shot that i just think really teed up how good virtual reality can be for films was when one of the actors was coming through into a room and on a submarine it's a bit like this you have a little archway and he sort of stepped over like that and it was just cool because you felt the depth and that's what you kind of have to portray on virtual reality. Um, I found with films myself that changing the angle is really difficult and the way that the director did it here was when he stepped through and started walking towards the camera, you sort of flipped and became his perspective. All of a sudden you felt like you were first person and you were looking at this kitchen hatch and he was shining a torch and it felt like I was shining a torch. Very similar to what I've been doing recently on Phasmophobia, enjoying myself on that. It was like that first person video game experience. So I found in the past when creating virtual reality films, sound design is either there or it isn't. And this is one thing I think that Apple did very well in terms of immersion. The whole thing is about making you feel like you're with those soldiers on that World, World, World War II submarine under the water. And it did feel like I could hear, you know, the water being pushed against the cylinder of the, the submarine. You could hear things dripping like, you know, old wartime machinery did. You know, if it's got a water tank and electrics running through it, you felt like you could hear the cables and the water, you know, going around you in that space as the story is being told. It was obviously very quiet because of course it was filmed at night time on the submarine which gave it that extra depth of feel as well because you haven't got the noise and the bustle of the workers until the alarm goes off which is when you do get that and you really experience the rush and how everyone gets out and starts putting everything together and then of course the action scene starts happening and like any good old submarine film of course it's either going to be blown up or sink and that's exactly what happens. I'm not going to spoil it too much. I think the ending is 
not an ending. I think it's more just the like, hey, how did you like that? And then you sort of come out of it and give get time to reflect. But, you know, there isn't much story in this. Again, it is just showing, I think, where Apple can go, but also going off this with a really big bang, no pun intended again, <laughs> but also to show that, you know, Apple aren't just doing things to entertain, they're teaching you, you know, the worlds of submarines, what it was like. There's like that other element that you get from virtual reality of actually sort of believing you're there and then having those memories to go back to. That's kind of what I do enjoy about virtual reality, especially with like the video game stuff as well. Like when you win a race in virtual reality, it feels like you've driven that car around that track the best you can. And I think that's what Apple are going to tap into is making you feel like you're there giving you an experience that is in your own home but you feel like you've been to Prague today or on the cliffs in Norway which is another documentary they've done that again was outstanding and makes me think as filmmakers where can we go with this because we're gonna to have to join in someday it's not gonna be an exclusive club as much as the gear at the moment for high end is around five to six thousand dollars um, but it will come down as more lenses get made. Now coming back to that scene in the kitchen where it switches to first person really highlighted something I think that virtual reality is probably going to go down as an actual enjoyable entertainment sphere and that's horror because as we were walking towards the kitchen counter in that experience with the torch my brain was just getting all heightened and excited in and also scared because I was waiting for something to jump out or bang. You know, the tension was being built up and it was a perfect time to do a jump scare. However, they don't. And it makes me think actually, the, the rush you get from a jump scare, even though some people don't like horror films, it's gonna be a great market for it. I think being scared out your skin in your office is just absolutely hilarious. Like once you calm down from it, but a good horror just gets you, you know, out of the stress of the world here and more stressing about what is going on because it's it's that heightened senses you're listening more you're looking more um and as someone who's played a lot of horror games i absolutely think it's definitely a way <laughs> i know that apple have done you know shows on flat screen in horror before so i, I don't think it's going to be long before they decide let's have some fun here one thing I also think worked really well was the length. I think this isn't going to work for like a, an Avengers length film because I think it's quite taxing. If any of you have ever used virtual reality for, before, it's very taxing. Um, obviously, especially when you're not playing a video game and the movements are being done for you, sometimes your brain just gets tired of it thinking it's moving and you have to adapt to that like if you want to stop you have to physically pause it and I think that's what I found after like 20 minutes of doing virtual reality films is like I just get a bit like I need to come out of the headset now like I'm a bit done um, again it's personal preference so some people won't care and some people just not want to be moved I think from an actual film perspective there was no chance of any motion sickness so well done Apple that's a hard thing to do there was also for a film about a sinking submarine no like element to feeling like you're going to drown because they don't force you under the water it sort of like just sort of happens nicely to put it blankly um, and I think that's another thing they thought about as well is like not everyone's going to enjoy this experience as a virtual reality veteran can I call myself that? I don't know. But like you are enclosed in a headset to the point where it's very isolating, hence why horror works so well because you've cut off every other senses. And one of the most best thing that ever happened to me, I was playing Minecraft and I was in a cave and this is all relevant. And the scariest thing that's ever happened to me in VR was somebody chucked a tea towel at me while I was playing it. Are you sure we came there? Ah, I was because I wasn't expecting it and I was practically blind, also in a dark cave. It was just hilarious. It was great because it just made me jump. And I think that's one thing you've got to remember with virtual reality, um, especially if you put AirPods in and you've got this thing over your face, you're literally cut off from the outside world and you are somewhere else. And it sounds weird, but once you start experiencing it and seeing where the future of VR actually is, you'll kind of get where I'm coming from. So the future for virtual reality inside the Vision Pro, I think is actually pretty bright. I just don't understand why Apple have made the jump to do virtual reality so quickly especially when the cost of entry is like four grand it's, it's just bonkers i don't understand 
why they've done it yet. I know they can build their library up, but it's about, you know, getting that steam rolling to the point where like we question about the MetaQuest and the PSVR 2 being too expensive and they actually do have good offerings as at the moment this is a development piece of kit really like only developers are getting it to develop for it and there are brilliant applications on there but the standard users who don't even enter the virtual space normally aren't particularly going to buy one if you look at the release date it was a lot of social media influencers with a lot of cash and obviously film directors and all that who want to get into that space. But the Joe Blogs of this world is not going to be able to experience a lot of these unless if somebody has a headset and goes, try this out. And I think that's the risk Apple could run into because I just think that like unless if the Apple Vision, which I think is the next edition, uh, which might be, I don't know, 1200 comes out, then yeah, I get it. I, I could see where this actually could work. But is, you know, £4,000 worth 12 minutes of your time and a couple of apps? A lot of people are going to say no. And as someone who does a lot of virtual reality, it's not in my top three of best headsets out there. I think from just what offer and what experiences you get, it's great and it's a fantastic Apple ecosystem. But I didn't need it and it doesn't really fill the VR world as much as it should yet. And I'm, I'm careful my words because uh, I am a massive Apple fan. And I think there's a lot that Apple offer, but at the moment, I want, I want to see more. But what have we learned from this as, as like a videographer myself is the way they're taking their documentaries are actually stellar. Earlier I mentioned about climbing one in Norway. It was absolutely fantastic. I felt like I was on the cliff. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to fall, but I was sat there with this person completely isolated. It was me and her on this rope. And I did feel like, well, what are we doing here? And I learned a lot about someone's personal journey. And I think the way that directors and the camera operators understand how these visuals work, I think are absolutely fantastic. But like, great, you've got all these documentaries. At the moment, I'd say it's not accessible. I think if they get the Apple Vision, brill, you know, a thousand pound headset, that'll get us into the entry world of virtual reality for Apple fans. It will be great to see. I reckon 2026 before we even get a hint of that. But I said Apple TV is not just limited to the Apple TV box. It can actually be downloaded onto, I don't know, Sony PlayStation. I think it's on Xbox. It's also on smart TVs. So whether they'll open this up to Meta, and you know you can experience it from your own headsets because it is only 180 virtual reality which is my final point we think of virtual reality most of the time as being 360 which is absolutely fantastic but from a filming perspective it's a nightmare you've got lights and camera rigs that you can't hide so you'll notice that a lot of these productions will be filmed in 180 which is literally like this sort of view i can't even get it into my camera lens but like it's like that sort of view your sort of eye line um, and you can look around and it's good. You're not twisting and overshooting things. You're literally being able to just experience it sitting down. And I think that's where Apple went right with this submerged film was you, they got the perspective, the story and the right angles to make this feel like one, you're there and two, you, you know, you're experiencing this without feeling like you have to do pretty much a bit of a workout, which is mad. So, and that's the big difference between, I think the film world of virtual reality, it's very flat 180, as if you're used to playing horror games, racing games, you want that immersion, you need that rush of things moving past you, the distance, but that sort of stuff adds motion sickness and ugh, you name it, like there's, there's loads of tropes of virtual reality, but I think it's the future. And as I've mentioned, the Apple Vision should be the next thing they make. I, I can see them dropping the word pro, so it doesn't really you know, ruin this device and still gives it a reason to exist, but to be able to just watch things and use certain apps to a certain point where it's a consumer level, a bit like how Meta and PlayStation VR are, like affordable and enjoyable out the box. I think is the way forward. So that's my opinions of it. I think Submerge is absolutely brilliant. The director's done a fantastic job. I think as a short film, it's definitely worth your watch. If you can get somewhere with an Apple Vision Pro and you've got 15 minutes to yourself, it is definitely worth it. So thank you very much for watching. My Max has gone to sleep, so I'm gonna end the video there. And I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know down below what you think of virtual reality. You know, this is still quite fresh, even though it's been around really since the 90s, but we're not gonna to talk too much about that. Um, but thank you so much for joining in. Joining in? Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you in another video.